Hello, this here is the LEGO Speed Champions 2023 Nissan Skyline GTR R34 from Too Fast, Too Furious, the second movie in the Fast and Furious franchise. This comes with 319 pieces and I built it live over on Twitch. It cost me $25 US. Yes, they're up to 25 now, not 20 anymore. And if you're interested in buying it for yourself, you can find it tagged on the video. This is a correction. The footage you're about to see is missing this one exhaust tip piece, but I'm not gonna re-record the entire video just because of that one piece. As usual, let me start with a look at it from some different angles and I'll tell you about the build a bit, which honestly was not too, too interesting, too special for most of it. I think the most interesting stuff was what they did for the front end, which I think was done really, really well. The end product is good. And I think the experience of putting it together was also very good. The rear lights, you can kind of see how they were done right here, but I think they were also done well. I do have some issues with this and I do have some specific things that I particularly like about it. But uh, first of all, just in terms of details, that, is as perfect as I could possibly ask for. All of that is as perfect as I, I personally could ask for in an R34 Skyline GTR in this size from Lego. Just couldn't ask for any better. Now it does use a number of stickers. So the GTR logo is actually a sticker, excuse me, is actually a print. Everything else is a sticker there. So you've got stickers on the inside, which is, which is interesting. You got a sticker on the top here as well. The match between the blues is pretty good. The match between the grays is not too bad, but you can see the gray right there. That little square right there is a little bit obvious. You can also see a little bit of vertical banding, a little bit of striping in there just from how the, the print process worked. Honestly, this doesn't bug me. The, uh, the gray mismatch doesn't bug me nearly as much as it did on the Aston Martin DB5 because you've got a large full rectangular area that's completely closed up. I just wish that this little bit down here on the side was closed up because they did print a sticker back here in that exact same shape. Uh, I think the rear end comes together pretty well also, but pretty quickly looking at this from many angles, I personally see R32. Like if I do this, it's 100% R32. This is definitely missing some of the some of the angularity, some of the sloping, and some of the the um, uh, the tapering of the nose that is really recognizable for the R34. I'd say this looks better to me in person than it did in the official pictures, even. Uh, just overall, I'm definitely satisfied with the overall look of this thing. I know that a lot of folks don't like to see any studs on Lego things, which is a little bit ironic. But here, even I, who am not afraid of Lego studs. I think that there are probably too many studs exposed here. I don't know exactly how to replace that. I didn't look into it too closely, but probably taking some of those out, I think about half of them would have helped a lot. Uh, the whole greenhouse I think is done pretty well. A little suggestion of roll cage back there. I moved this sticker here forward and down so that you'd have more of a continuous black area there. I think that helps quite a bit. All this comes off easily, of course, and the inside is really nice for First, first of all, the build, but also the parts, the inclusion of the drum lacquered one by one cylinders and then the little one by one modified tile with the vertical. I'm not going to call it what people <laughs> normally call it. Uh, the, the thing at the end there that the flower is stuck onto for the three Nas bottles. That's that's just a perfect build inserted in there perfectly. And it's nice to get that piece in the drum lacquered color. You got two stickers there, a sticker there, a sticker there, a sticker also for the center. Right hand drive is appropriate. The seat is lined up with the steering wheel, which is not something they always do. I'm glad that they did it this time. And interestingly, this right here is a print. Why would they choose to do that as a print? There's only one of them in the set for the seat. There's one of them in the set and uh, you can't see it. I mean, you can barely see it when the canopy is on. You see it a little bit, of course, if a person is sitting in it, then you don't see it at all. Why choose that of all things on this, on this whole set? Very, very weird to me. Overall, it, oh, another thing that I really like, the wheel covers. Now they do stick out too much. You know, they should have more, more of a, a lip, a nice medium lip design on them, but that's okay. I think they still look good and they have the drum lacquered finish as well. This is the modern style of wheels. They're probably a little bit too small for this car, this, I mean, this car is getting big. You know, a street car, eight wide, I think looks like it's at a larger scale than a hypercar or a supercar at eight wide. 
even though they're the same overall size, just the, the size of the greenhouse makes a difference. But uh, these are the, the most recent generation, I think it's the third generation now, of Speed Champions wheels, which have the tires molded onto them, so you don't have separate bits for that. They've got the suggestions for the underglow here, which doesn't really do much. It's really for the builder. When you look at this directly from the side, you see all of these studs, which does not look good right there, but from most angles, you don't see it too much, but you definitely don't see the underglow. So these are just extra pieces that are included really for the sake of the builder. And as you can see from the other side, as usual, most of this is built with just a single piece, single large piece for the whole chassis, which is also a bit ironic for an, a higher end, more expensive, more advanced vehicle to still be using a highly specialized chassis piece. It helps a lot. Oh, I've built a lot of custom cars and having a good chassis to start with really, really, really helps, but still, it's not fully custom built up from scratch. You can change the angle of the wing back here as well. That's good. Uh, yeah, I like that. I think that's a, a good idea. Yeah. All in all, pretty good looking, but doesn't look like an R34 to me. It looks like an R32 with an R34 front end clip kit. The Brian O'Connor minifigure is uh, interesting. I think the hair is probably right. Uh, you look at it from a distance, it's about right, but getting into the details, the mouth is weird to me. Eyes a little bit dark, maybe the five o'clock shadow is about as good as you can ask for in Lego form. The eyebrows I think are right. The shirt is going for the right thing, that designer uh, uh, T, you know, baggy, long designer T look, but the lines are weird, the fold lines, the stretch lines don't seem to make sense to me personally. The back the back kind of works, but the bits underneath the arms are a little bit, a little bit weird, or the armpits. The dual molded arms are good to get. No print for the legs, but I think that's okay and all. This one just kind of confuses me a little bit. No alternate face for this one, but I don't know if that, yeah, I guess there wasn't any hair, any facial hair that was being blocked by this. But uh, it's all we're gonna get in life for a, a character played by Paul Walker minifig for anyone who was a fan of him in particular, rest in peace. These are the leftover pieces, including an extra of this nice drum lacquered piece that I like in that new finish. And the sticker sheet is quite extensive for this one. There are, there are many more stickers for this set than I expected for what it looks like. Yes, it has a graphics package on it, but I didn't expect to have this many little individual stickers uh, to be applied to it. Thankfully, one thing that you did not have to do stickers for was right here, the, the fenders, just at the rear. Those are two different prints, one for this side, one for this side, so that they're facing the correct direction. They didn't try to make a generic version of it, and that's a nice plus. So I paid $25 US for this. It's now 25 euros as well. It varies throughout the eurozone as always, but that's the, the starting point. And it's 20 pounds UK. Each time the prices go up for a given product in a given line, you kind of have to ask for more. Now, when they took us from the six wide to the eight wide, it totally made sense for them to increase the price. Now they've increased the price again. And though part of that is because of inflation and all that, I, I do kind of have to ask for a little bit better quality. Thankfully, the designers on the Speed Champions team have continuously in, improved their game. So I really don't have a major problem with that, but 25 is, is starting to feel steep for a Lego car that holds one figure. And these cars are huge relative to the minifigures, but I am still very happy with the switch to eight wide because they look so, so much better. And you're getting so much more car with this than you were in the six wide days. With the, the thoughts about value though, and the need to get a little bit more as the price goes up. I will point out, let me see if I can do this. Yeah. Things like this become less forgivable in my opinion. See that? That's a, that's a mold mark where they just broke off where the extra plastic came off in inside of the mold. These have gotten stronger and stronger and thicker and thicker over time. And I'm, I'm not happy with that. They've especially gotten worse over the past couple of years. And sometimes they're, they stick out so far that if I need to put a piece next to it, I actually have to cut the, you know, have to trim it off as if I'm building a model car kit. It's not a very Lego-like thing. So I need to see all of quality getting better 
consistently or at least staying at a very high level. And when it slips like that, it doesn't feel good. The sticker's not matching. Again, in this case right here with this one, doesn't bug me as much as it did with, for example, the, the DB5 because of the, the shaping of it. Speaking of shaping, again, this is this just screams R32 to me. It screams it, except for the except for the front front clip. If you look at the box here, look at how look at how pointed that thing is. Like it's it's really it's really tapered down from the top and also from the side. And though there is a little bit of rake to the car, I believe there's a rake to it, isn't there? I think there's a one plate rake from front to rear for the whole thing. It's not enough in the front. So this definitely could have been done better. It, it's possible for there to be an eight wide R34, I'm confident, that looks more like an R34. But all in all, if that doesn't bug you, if what you see doesn't bug you, you will enjoy this and you should get it. It has already sold out most places, so you might have to back order it or you know, watch for a, a resupply or restock of it. But the build is, is uh is very satisfactory interior is really good with the nas bottles and everything the wheel covers a lot of this does feel good so if you're not bothered by what i am bothered by you're going to be really really happy with this the figure i think i've said enough about that my opinions but thank you very much for watching this i hope that this provided some value to you and you know gave you something to help you to make your own purchase decisions and i'll talk to you again soon see you on twitch or back here on youtube real soon bye for now